Hello, everyone. It is time for the recorded lecture from Chapter 2 of your Shinki and Hanrahan text. Chapter 2 is by Marion Keim, and it's titled Developing Peace Through Community Sport in Multi-Ethnic South African Contexts. But, of course, we're using this chapter, and we're applying it to the United States and other nation-states around the world in terms of the topic of sport and society. So the premise of this chapter is that the role sport can play in enhancing development of youths, in this case South Africa, is actually a very powerful one. It also looks at how local sports initiatives at the grassroots level can help to build peace. And if you've done the reading of chapter 2, you know that it starts out with a very powerful quote from the late Nelson Mandela, former president of South Africa, and he notes sports and its power to change the world, to inspire and to unite people, and to be used as an instrument for peace. So this chapter is about sports as a reflection of society in a positive way. And South Africa's history for centuries, it was under colonial rule. It was a very repressive state and still has its share of problems today, which we'll get to in a moment. But South Africa has been going through a struggle as a democratic society, and sport has played a key role in its progress. So look at some of the demographics of South Africa today. About 80% of its residents have some sort of black African ancestry, but they also have a sizable component in their nation state of Europeans and also Indians. It's a relatively new democracy, just some 20 years old, and Nelson Mandela was elected as its first president. So exactly how can sport be seen as a catalyst for change in South Africa? Well, in recent history, from the 1950s through actually the uh, mid-1970s, South African government policies regarding sport were repressive, and they were very much white-dominated, and you can see some details on that on pages 12 and 13 of your text. And even today, South Africa is known as being somewhat repressive. I'll look at the middle of this slide and then the bottom part of this slide. In 1992, South Africa returned to the Olympic Games with a more diverse Olympics team. One reason uh, that uh, helped to shape that uh, achievement was world pressure on South African apartheid policies, leading to the end of apartheid just a couple of years after those 1992 Olympic Games in 1994. So even today, South Africa has the world's highest murder and rape rates, and also the highest of what's called the Gini coefficient, and that's a measure of the inequality of income and wealth. And you can see in your text, pages 17 and 18, a long list of current societal challenges in South Africa. So now to the role of sport, but also to the role of sport in developing and sustaining peace. There are several definitions of peace given in chapter 2 of your text. And of course, before we get to those definitions, this chapter does acknowledge there are no quick fixes, but sport can be part of uh, the healing process and uh, also, of course, it's important that sport is administered appropriately, and there are other powerful factors in play, governmental factors, to achieve community development, social transformation, and peace building. But uh, eloquent speaker that he was and writer that he was, Mandela phrases what we're talking about as achieving a rainbow nation at peace. So a very important definition of peace in Chapter 2 is positive peace, credited to Galtung in 1964. This means a restoration of relationships and a human society that creates social systems meeting the needs of all in the population. There's also a definition of negative peace, and that's the absence of violence. But also, this is within a Western context. Western societies see peace as a contractual relationship implying mutual recognition and agreement. 
and peace can also be seen very much as a political condition that ensures justice and social stability. So we're talking about South, South Africa and sport in South Africa, how sport can be a catalyst for change. Well, what's been some progress? In South Africa, sport has been seen as a way to overcome race and class barriers, to help with social transformation, and to help form a national identity as the nation continues to develop. We're about six minutes into this recorded lecture. We have just a few slides left. And I wanted to mention, of course, that we have our two student presenters on Thursday of week three who will be giving us information on one of the two case studies that can be found in chapter two. So I'm not going to be covering any information about those two case studies. So as we're winding up this summary of the important concepts and principles from chapter two, Kimes work, it's about the goal of peace and how sport can help achieve a sustained peace. So how is that done? The power of sport through a simple language can create role models in a society like South Africa. It can help to change attitudes. It can increase one's self-esteem and it can help the disadvantaged to discover and experience their own personal strengths. So that's of course not exclusive to South Africa. We have many, many examples of how sport changes society at the local level, state level, national level in the United States as well. But let's look at one South African example. Not only was it Nelson Mandela, but also Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who were praised for wearing of a simple Springbok jersey back in 1995. This helped make progress in the social transformation of South Africa. It helped unite this diverse people. And as you see toward the bottom of this slide, role models in sports can help with the education of youth in problem areas such as violence and drug abuse. So it seems very idealistic, but Keim, the scholar that uh, this author is, asks, is this just an ideal aspiration? Setting up the transition to the final slide of this recorded presentation. Actually, what is the way forward? Well, the author states, and I think you all agree, sport is not this magic bullet it's not just one part of the, it is just one part rather, of the solution. It's not a single element that's going to solve a nation state's problems. There have to be other concerted and properly administered governmental actions. So in South Africa and elsewhere, peace building aims to prevent violent outbreaks and conflicts and also to transport uh, rather transform society and of course sports is a big factor in this transformation. So to conclude, Kime calls for more public discussions on sports and also for more research to be done on the influence of sports in transformations of nation states, such as a public discussion that was held back in 2010 in South Africa and also the successful 2010 FIFA World Cup games held in South Africa which helped to increase the interest of the public uh, in transformation development of the South African society and also raised attention to problems in South Africa. So the problems remain both in South Africa and around the world. Sport is one component, one element in a transformation, transformation of a nation state's infrastructure, transformation of a nation state's economy, and a transformation of a nation state's legacy. So let's close with a powerful quote from Nelson Mandela that uh, he wrote and spoke back in 1991. And this is from the end of chapter two by Keim in your textbook from Shinki and Hanrahan. And Mandela said, a united, non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic South Africa is the best hope for handing over such a society to our children. It is a vision which we promote vigorously it is a vision which we invite you to examine, to refine, and to enrich. 
it is, if necessary, a vision which we invite you all to surpass. And that's quoted at the end of chapter 2 in our text uh, from 1991, a uh, speech by the late President of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. So we're at the 10-minute mark, and that concludes this recorded presentation, the main concepts of chapter 2 from the Shinky and Hanrahan text. Thank you, everyone.